All right, welcome to video number four. And one of the things I have to apologize for, I apologize for this shadow here. Um, unfortunately, the camera, which is taking this picture, is attached to a to a pole, which kind of keeps it hanging so it's up in the air. Otherwise, I'd have to hold it and I'd be shaking. But unfortunately, the shadow, because of the way the lamps are, um, it gets in the way. So I apologize for that, and hopefully it won't be too distracting for you. All right, again, we kind of talked about it last video but this video we're gonna work with two um, graphs okay now let, why not, I'm gonna tape mine in right away just because um, the weird thing is I cannot stop this video to pause it so, so while you guys work I actually have to keep the video going so at some point in time and what I'm gonna tell you is let's look at this data quickly right now and and let's see, what kind of graph are we going to be making here? What kind of graph are we going to use? Well, this is the stock price by month. So it's talking about month, meaning time. So what kind of graph are we going to use if we're talking about changes over time? Now, hopefully remember that that's going to be a line graph. Now, the one thing that should help you and should probably give it away is that, do you notice how these, the months, are on the line versus in between the lines. If they were in between the lines, then we'd be coloring in and then that would be the bar graph. But this is a line graph. This is population um, of Bear Creek by decade. So it's talking about a change over time. So this one is going to be a line graph as well. So what I would like you to do is I'd like you just to take some time and I'd like you to complete these line graphs, okay? Um, I cannot stop the video, so you're just going to have to pause the video right now and work on your line graph. Good luck. Hopefully you are done with your line graph. Um, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to complete the, the first one and then the first one and then the second one. Um, we'll start with, right now we know that it, it already has the stock price, so it's got a title, it's got months labeled, and it's got dollars labeled. So now all we have to do is we have to fill in. At January, it was $25. So I'm just going to put a dot right there. February was $30. So it went up $5. March, ooh, big jump to $45. April, $50. May, $40. May, let's go 40 to May. And then June went to 55 Okay, and to, for it to be a line graph, we're going to have to actually draw a line. So line there, line there, line there, line there, line there. All right. Now, let's look at the population of Bear Creek by decade. First thing we have to do, and hopefully if you haven't already done this graph, do, pause the video and do so. And if you have, well, let's work through it. The first thing that you'll notice right now is that what's missing? What is in here? Well, we don't have a title. So we're going to write population of Bear Creek. And I'm guessing Bear Creek is a city, not an actual creek, because I don't know how they count all the fish in there. Okay, we have our by decade. 1960, 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000. So now we have to figure out what our scale is going to be. What is this going to go up? And we've got one, we've got 900 to 7,000. So if I just go um, every line, maybe 1,000. So that would be 1,000. This would be 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. 6,000, 7,000, okay? And look, we have to give this one a label, and we'll just say um, number of people. Well, that's horrible writing. I apologize for that. But you should be able to pretend mostly that it's number of people. All right, now let's create the graph. Let's complete the graph. And because we can, let's switch colors. All right, now 
1960, there were 996, which is pretty close to 1,000. I'm not going to really worry about that. I'm just going to put it up right there. 1970, we were close to 2,000, so 2,000, 1970. Um, 1980, we were 3,500, so there's 3,000. There's probably 3,500. 1980. Um, 1990, wow, big jump to 6,100, so a little bit past 6,000 here. Probably right there. And then 19, or 2,000 is going to be 7,600, so 7,500, 7, 600 is going to be right about there. And let's draw, let's connect our dots here. Connect our dots, la la la. Or there's some sort of song like that. All right. And then we should probably put a label down at the bottom here that says year, just so people know what we're talking about. All right, so these are our two graphs that we've made. We've got our, um, both are line graphs because these are these are continuous data sets because they change over time, January to February to March to April to May to June, from 1960 to 1970, 1980 to 1990, 2000. Hopefully, boys and girls, you've got the right, um, your graph turned out okay. One of the most difficult parts of making a graph is figuring out what this scale is going to be. Oftentimes, you have to look at, okay, what are these numbers close to? And then you have to guess. Now, Conveniently, I knew already beforehand because I've got the teacher's manual right here. It helps me. It's a good thing. But in this case, what you would have to do is probably just guess and check. But generally, when you look at the numbers, you should see a pattern emerging. And, you should, and that should be how you um, um, figure things out in terms of what, uh, what your scale to use. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, let's hop back to our first page of today. Oops, I should probably stand that up. And let's look at our question. What is the difference between discrete data and continuous data? And right now, because I can, I'm going to ask you, how do you graph each one? Okay, so two different questions here. We're talking about discrete data and continuous data. What's the difference? And then how do we graph them? We talked about two types of graphs today, and one graph goes with discrete, and one graph goes with continuous. Question is, can you figure that out without looking back in your notes? Hopefully you can. All right, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, please talk to Mr. Winkleman. But regardless, you should probably talk to Mr. Winkleman because he's got a wonderful gift for you. All right. Have a good day.